We're going to play a little game today. We're going to ask ChatGPT what five must-know tips and tricks are for all gardeners to succeed. And then we'll see how correct they are with science. So let's talk to our overlords and see what they think about us growing our own food. You guys are going to join me for this ride. I'd never used ChatGPT, but here we go. What do you say? To Hi, how are you, ChatGPT? I would like to know the five tips and tricks every gardener must know to succeed at gardening in their first year. She said, he, it said hello. Oh, it says it's great at starting your garden journey. Kind. Who said computers can't be? You know, they do make robots. They're making companion robots. Designed specifically for companionship and intimacy. I may be in the market. If they talk to me like this, I am in the mark. Number one, start small and plan ahead. Begin with manageable space. Choose small garden beds or a few containers, blah, blah, blah. Research your plants and know what to include. Start small and plan ahead. Yes, it is correct. I will say from experience, and a lot of Geek Crew members are going to tell you the exact same thing. If you overcommit, you will stop gardening. You will hate gardening and you will give up. So start small. One, two gardens max. I know when I first moved out into my own home and I started gardening, I did a garden the size of what I was used to. And it was a lot. It was a lot. And uh, despite the fact that I love gardening, I love plants, I love soil. Like, obviously, I went to university for it. I work. Like, I love fertile. Anyways, I love this stuff. And it was too much for me. To be totally honest, I gave up for a few years like I would start the garden and then I would just give up and I would start the garden I would give up so I would agree starting small is definitely the key I would start with one maybe two beds and then containers so start as many containers as you like and by containers I mean like one plant per like a five gallon pail bucket or five gallon pail pot and start there and then work your way up after that. And don't go too exotic. Like, I know you're going to be tempted to go for, like, passion fruit and, like, crazy exotic tomatoes. Just go for the basics, the staples to start with. And learn the staples before you move on to them. Okay, number two, I agree with. There's nothing else to talk about other than knowing your soil. Duh. Like, duh. That makes sense. This is interesting. Healthy soil is the key to healthy plants. Just to test your soil to see if it's acidic or alkaline. Alkaline. And then according with compost and organic material, drainage is crucial. So add perlite or sand. Uh, okay. Well, it started good and then it got a little cray cray. So healthy soil is the key. Testing your soil's pH, acidity versus alkalinity. Definitely on point, definitely important. When it tells you to amend accordingly, mend that pH accordingly with organic material and compost, not possible. It's impossible to do, especially in like a mineral soil on a large scale. Watch this video here on how to actually do it because that is just going to frustrate the bejeebus out of you. So no. Good drainage is crucial. Yeah, it is crucial. Adding perlite to your garden soil, probably, probably not a good idea. Very expensive idea but not a good idea. This video here, sand. Shockingly enough, this, that is true. It does not make cement. That's not a thing. It's literally not a thing. Soil textural triangle is your proof of that because there is no cement block in that triangle. And the reason there's no cement block is because that's just not a thing. So you're welcome. Just know. But yes, know your soil. But know your soil from not my perspective, but like not what chat GPT. I don't hold myself in that high of esteem, but just not, don't listen to what that one said. Water wisely. I like this. They have like a vibe, like it's got like a rhyme to it so you can like remember it. Okay. Plants need water, but can be overwatered and be damaged from overwatering. Focus on deep watering, not just spraying the surface. To encourage strong root growth, early morning is often best to water as it reduces evaporation and helps avoid fungal disease. Okay. So a couple things here. Yes to overwatering and underwatering, obviously not being helpful. Not spraying the surface. Yes, hugely, very, very important. Don't just spray the surface. When you water, you want to water once. Okay, when you first transplant for that first week out of just pure safety reasons, water every single day for an entire week. Bottom, bottom line. After that, you could go for every two to three days watering. And you want to water for 30 to 45 minutes at a time to really push the water deep into the soil profile. Reason being, number one, it's going to force your roots to actually dig for water and dig for nutrients, which then number two 
results in a plant that has a root system that is able to get through a very hot, dry August or late summer because it has a root system that's already dug in to get that additional stuff that's lower in the profile rather than being lazy because plants will be lazy and they'll just capture from the surface. So my camera died because I started talking about poetry and going deep emotionally with plant roots and it said PG or on YouTube, please. Anyways, yeah. So yes, to the watering deep. Early mornings, often the best times to water. That whole line is bolt. It's just nothing. It doesn't like the whole fungal disease. Anyways, the best way to avoid fungal disease on the the leaves is to water at the base of the plant and not get too much moisture on the leaves. I will say this though, it doesn't even really count if there's moisture on the leaves if you're properly pruning the plants. So if you're removing excessive levels of plant parts that don't need to be there, you're allowing for proper air circulation via pruning, you're not going to end up with fungal diseases due to your inability or the inappropriate way in which you're watering in most cases. However, evaporation is lower when you water mornings or evenings. Now, You could argue that your rates of evaporation are lower if you water at night, allowing the water to sit there and then get absorbed into the soil overnight prior to the sun coming out versus doing it in the morning. Then at the same time, the group would argue that if you water at night, it results in humidity, which could result because it's not getting, you know, evaporated right away. So I, you know, the best time to water is when you can water. Don't be getting up early for in the morning to water your plants because if you're tired like just don't don't do that don't disrupt your life flow just to get it watered at the perfect time does it really matter that much no bottom line no number four is hugely incorrect choose the right plants for your zone but here's the thing if you're a new gardener and you're listening to this your zone doesn't matter It's, it's irrelevant it doesn't matter if you're in canada it doesn't matter if you're in the u.s it's irrelevant it's irrelevant unless you're doing perennials. If you're doing perennials, then use your zone. What is relevant is your last frost date. And what's even more relevant than your last frost date is actually whether or not you have ways to circumvent your last frost date via things like cold frames or greenhouses. If you have either one of those two, then your last frost date doesn't even really truly matter. Um, so yeah, I the zone thing only matters with perennials. Annuals, it means nothing. I've done videos on like when to start seeds. I have a video on how to start seeds without me even telling you when to start seeds, just based off what the seed packet says and what area you live in. Watch those videos. Those are much, much better. What the internet says about zone. Chat GBT, you're horribly wrong. That one was very wrong. It, okay, sorry. So it does have one. The last sentence is true. Native plants tend to be more resilient and require less maintenance. Yes, of course they do. I mean, If we're talking perennials, those are the way to go. Natural native plants is definitely top choice. Number five, weed and mulch regularly. This one should have been at number one because it is the deciding factor between how big your garden should be, how much and when you should water, your soil, all of it. These two things are major and they're all lumped into one it did this category dirty mulching helps retain moisture suppress weeds regulate soil temperatures according to chat gbt you can use organic mulches wood chips straw leaves and then to stay up on stay on top of weeding especially in the early season so they do not outcompete your plants for nutrients that's resources in general actually so mulch let's look at that one first when it comes to its ability to retain water yes or moisture in the soil yes It reduces the rates of evaporation. It does suppress weeds so long as it's deep enough. You need at least two to three inches, I would say, to make it really effective. And by effective, I mean it doesn't, it's not going to suppress them as in they don't exist. What it will do though is make it much easier to weed because you're it won't the the roots won't be dug into the soil, if you will. What I will say is what suppresses weeds also suppresses baby seedlings. So if you're not physically transplanting into the soil, skip the mulch until the plants themselves get a little bit larger and then go in with the mulch. Very important. Otherwise, you will snap out your seeds as well, particularly ones that are photosensitive and need light to germinate. You 
put on two, three inches of mulch, you're really setting yourself up for failure with that one. However, the other factor with mulch is that, yes, it does regulate the temperature and it keeps the temperature down. If you are in Canada, if you are in a northern U.S. space, somewhere that's cold, and you put the mulch on right away, you're insulating it to stay cold. And if you want to get in the garden sooner, you want to remove that mulch and let your black soil shine, maybe with like a, a poly over top, to heat it, to get into it sooner. Because if you leave mulch on top that's like ice filled and then you put more mulch on top, you're just, you're insulating it against the cold. So if you want to get in sooner, you remove it temporarily, not permanently. It's very temporary. Literally, you could probably remove it and in a weekend, your soil could heat up quite substantially. I'm talking very temporary. But that route, if you want to go that route, and then put the mulch back on top of that. So yes, mulch, yes. So long as there's a little bit of nuance there, but the statement's relatively true. Weeds, yes. So that weeds, seriously. And when it says early in the season is the most important, they are dead serious. If you do not weed, it will take out your garden. They don't just compete for nutrients. They compete for root space. They compete for light space. They will bring in pests, they will bring in disease, they will contribute to lack of airflow. Like weeds are, and weeds is in the eye of the beholder. A weed is anything that interferes with the growth of the plant that you are wanting to support. So this could come in all shapes, forms, and sizes. It could be a wildflower garden that you planted and just those are taking over the space. Technically, that is mint. I mean, that's a purposely planted perennial herb that can and will take over and act like a weed and compete with your regular old plants. So the definition for weed and getting rid of is anything that's interfering with the growth of something that you want to grow. So don't be shy about pushing perennials back or, you know, pushing your biennials back that are running interference. So yeah, if you're new to gardening, Trent and the Geek Crew, we're an awesome group. This is my most recent video because I don't know what else to give you after this video to watch. And that's what uh, YouTube says you should watch. So, or Google. I don't know. One of the two. AI. AI says to watch it. This video is brought to you by ChatGPT. It is not sponsored, but I just thought I should say that. Anyways, bye. Does Coke Zero have caffeine in it? Because it's a work night. It's late. I have to work tomorrow. That is caffeine. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Okay.